Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. For premium picks, look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, there is a country where, in my opinion, it's an elite fighting community. Right, you look at the fighters from this country and quite frankly many of them are world-class but yet for some reason this country always gets overlooked I've noticed whenever I start talking about guys from this country it's as if the minute you cross the border and you mention a guy from this country people start to grow people start to underestimate the fighter there seems to be some discounting of these guys talents right let's call it the Australian discount right whether it's Daniel Gill who people groan every time I mention that I thought Gill the then champion beat Darren Barker right Barker was awarded the decision in a fight in which Barker hits the canvas in the only knockdown of the fight and it's not a flash knockdown right people grow even though when you go through Daniel Gill's pass you'll find that he's only lost razor close fights like the first Mundine fight and of course the Darren Barker fight right then of course there's Lucas Brown understand Lucas Brown famously took apart James Tony I know I myself have been critical of Lucas Brown here online but Lucas Brown has premier footwork right apparently he used to be a kickboxer it shows in the ring he has coordination he's been calling out people like Tyson Fury but yet his pleas haven't gotten mainstream attention right Lucas Brown is quite frankly a world-class heavyweight he's a guy you need to keep an eye on then of course there's the guy who will be fighting in a day or so Anthony Mundine against Joshua Clotty now it was amazing Mundine recently fought Shane Mosley big name here in the United States right long career uh, really if you go back in Mosley's past you'll see that he's one of the best lightweight champions ever right big time puncher a big time reputation here in the states I took Mundine in that fight people groaned they were like you gotta be kidding Anthony Mundine is in his late 30s right forget the fact that he was younger than Shane Mosley right people also remembered that Shane had beat Pablo Cano and you know Shane had done a lot of things went 12 rounds with Floyd Mayweather then of course the fight started and you noticed that Mundine was much bigger than Shane Mosley you notice Mundine is a master counter puncher you notice Mundine had better defense than Shane Mosley you notice that Mundine quite frankly was the better chess player than Shane Mosley now let me say this I know Mundine has had a problem with higher volume aggressive guys like Garth Wood first fight right and like Daniel Gill second fight no question about it right I'm guessing if Mundine were in the ring with a younger version of himself the younger version might beat him right but understand at a slower pace Anthony Mundine is one of the sports premier chess players right dare I say I personally don't believe anyone's unbeatable I'd like to see Mundine against Floyd Mayweather right I like Mundine at a minus 250 those are the most recent odds I've seen over Joshua Clotty right now Clotty of course fought Miguel Cotto great match there are people who believe both guys won the fight. Clotty, of course, beat Zab Judah. Clotty, of course, went the distance with Manny Pacquiao. By the way, 
Claudio solved Pacquiao later in that fight. He lost the fight. Pacquiao had much more volume than him, but I want you to count the uppercuts Claudio hits Pacquiao with. Right? Claudio had Pacquiao time. The problem is Claudio fights at a slower pace. Right? His defense is a passive defense. He doesn't throw punches at you when you're throwing punches at him. You can overwhelm him. He has rabbit ears. He bends at the waist. He'll literally stop punching if you're pumping a jab and moving. Right? He's better against guys who come at him. Think Kodo. Guys who want to engage him. Then he is guys who are playing a cat and mouse game. Guys who are, in my opinion, a little bit more elite. Understand that just because you're front foot and throwing more punches doesn't mean you're winning the fight. Right? The chess players are looking for openings. They're looking to counter you. They're looking for you to drop that rabbit defense, actually throw punches, so they can block your punch and hit you with theirs. That's Mundine's game, right? If it's not high speed, if it's slower, if you're not hovering like Daniel Gill, Mundine's going to beat you most of the time. Let's talk about who Mundine is. People here in the United States don't realize that this is one of the dominant athletes in the sport. Right? Mundine was an elite rugby player for years. Dominant guy in the sport. Then he decides to box. Boxing's a second career for him. Right? The guy, of course, was Sonny Bill Williams, only with big time talent. Right? So Mundine has been around a long time. Because the United States and the UK are a bit self-absorbed here in the Western Hemisphere, right? We overlook fighters who have game but who live overseas. This fight is taking place in Australia. I think Mundine is going to come out. He's going to move. He's going to force Clotty out of his shell. I think Clotty is going to find that Mundine is too much of a master of distance. To be there when Clotty throws punches, right? I think Clotty is going to get frustrated. I think Clotty is going to find that he's in the ring with a fighter who has a greater amount of strategy and skills and less predictability than Manny Pacquiao. I like Anthony Mundine in this fight. I'm hoping that folks take a hard look at Mundine. Understand Mundine lost to Daniel Gill who himself is underrated in part because of this Australian discount. When you mention an Australian fighter, Danny Green, another one, you mention an Australian fighter, what you need to do is ask yourself, wow, why isn't this guy getting better treatment at the casino? It's a bit ridiculous to me to know that Claudia has only fought once, I believe, in the last year and a half, two years. And yet Mundine, who recently fought Shane Mosley and spanked Shane Mosley, spanked him, right? Mosley had never been stopped before in his career. I understand people are going to say Mosley's back tightened up, right? Mosley was suffering from Mundine-itis. Right, his back tightened up and he understood he was in the ring with a chess player who was probably going to take him out in the later rounds. Right, so you're telling me that on a $10 bet at minus 250, the casino is going to give me $4 if Mundine simply wins the fight? That's a 40% rate of return. I like those odds. I like Mundine in this one. Let me just say this though. Understand the risk involved. This is gambling. Right? Bets do and will blow up. Right? If Joshua Clotty comes in and is able to lure Mundine in, if Mundine gets full of himself like he did against 
Garth Wood the first time and gets a little bit careless and lounges out too much in the corner and allows Clotty to tee off on him and if Clotty's able to win the fight you lose it all. I just don't see that happening. I like Anthony Mundine in this fight and I suggest you take a hard look at Mundine. I don't believe many men in boxing would give Floyd Mayweather a competitive fight. I really don't. I know here online I've pointed out that I believe Amir Khan would. I also believe Anthony Mundine would. Simply because, again, Mayweather's volume has dropped. Right? With Khan, Khan would have a decided hand speed advantage. Right? Hand speed and volume, there's a possibility there. With Mundine, Mundine has length and savvy. He'd be matching Mayweather chess move for chess move. Right? And Mayweather's really more of a defensive fighter than an offensive fighter. I don't believe Mayweather would be able to duplicate what Daniel Gill did against Mundane. Also keep in mind, right, Daniel Gill fights Darren Barker. Darren Barker gets knocked down, almost knocked out, barely survives that round. Against Anthony Mundine, there are no moments like that. Right, I would argue, especially now, that Mundine's defense is better than Darren Barker's. So somehow, Anthony Mundine has become underrated. I like Mundine here at minus 250 over Joshua Clotty. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. And let me make another point. Before people say, you got to be kidding, Mundine against Mayweather... We have a basis for comparison, don't we? Right? Both guys fought Shane Mosley. Shane Mosley looked good against Mayweather early. In fact, he had his moments early against Mundine. But, right, Shane Mosley went the distance against Mayweather. Shane Mosley, first time in his career, bowed out on his stool against Anthony Mundine. Also, in terms of Mundine's size, and keep in mind, Mayweather has fought at 154. Right? Wasn't that fight against Canelo for a belt at 154? Just think about the size gap, though. Mundine fought Daniel Gill, middleweight champion. The first time, before Gill gets a title, he beats Gill. The second time, he goes the distance. That's the kind of size we're talking about. Mundine is big for 154. Right? So if Mundine were in the ring against Mayweather, understand you would have size, but more importantly, you would have skills. Serious counterpunching ability. Right? So. Just understand, I personally believe there's an Australian <laughs> discount out there, right? I'm not sure if the rest of the world fully understands the tradition of Australian boxing and how that country right now has several world-class fighters. For example, I expect, and we'll do this in a different video, I expect Daniel Gill to beat Matthew Macklin if that fight gets made. I expect Anthony Mundine to beat. Joshua Clotty, understand that Gil Mundine rematch was a high level boxing match. You can't look at that match. Look at the fact that, quite frankly, Mundine looked outgunned at times and reached a conclusion that he's washed up. Keep in mind, too, that Gil fight took place before Mundine dismantled Shane Mosley. I like Mundine at minus 250 over Joshua Clotty. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for us here online. Make your call on the fight. Tell me where I'm right, where I'm wrong. Tell me if there are any other countries that you feel, quite frankly, are being overlooked by the boxing community. If you believe that Australian fighters are being overlooked, tell us why. Thanks for stopping by.